Egunon, muy buenos días a todos. Vamos a dar comienzo a esta rueda de prensa que corresponde a la película que eh, dentro de la sección oficial supone una proyección especial. Wonders of the Sea es el título de la misma y contamos con la presencia en esta rueda de prensa de sus directores Jean-Michel Cousteau y Jean-Jacques Mantelot. También nos acompaña el productor y narrador de la, de la misma, Arnold Schwarzenegger, el productor François Mantelot, el director de fotografía, Gavin McKinney, y el compositor Christophe Jacqueline. Vamos a dar comienzo ya con la primera pregunta. All right, so uh, I'm going to ask a question in English, if that's okay, and this question is from Mr. Arnold. Huge honor, thank you so much for being here, sir. Huge fan, I've been following your career for a long time, up to the point that actually I moved to California. I am from here, from San Sebastián, and 12 years ago, I moved to California. Really incredible job you've been doing there in California, protecting the environment the last few years, and this movie is about protecting the environment as well. The question has to do with the federal government. I think that's, I hope that's okay. Uh, we have a new president in the White House, which, by the way, I do not have a negative opinion about. I know you, you might disagree with me, but I don't really. Uh, but the question is that he's trying to boost the economy in America, and this might have some uh, negative impact in the environment. How do you think these policies that are taking place in Washington, D.C., might affect the environment policies in California? Thank you. Well, thank you for your question, and um, thank you for your enthusiasm. Um, I think that we have, in California, proven that you can protect the environment and uh, lower the greenhouse gases, have more renewable energy, and go more in a green direction of alternative fueled cars and industries and all of that. And we have passed the toughest laws in the United States, environmental laws. And uh, everyone said to us that this is going to be suicidal, that our economy is going to crash, and this is going to be the worst thing for the economy and for jobs and the future. Well, now, 10 years later, it happens to be that the national GDP growth is around 2%. It was the last two quarters. The California GDP growth is 5%, so it's more than double. So we are outgrowing the rest of the United States. We are outperforming any state in the United States. We are number one. Um, our you know, GDP is approximately 2.5 to 2.7 trillion dollars. Uh, I mean, California is rocking. It's booming. And everyone wants to come to California because it's the number one place. So I think that if the federal government, Republicans and Democrats, and Donald Trump and his whole White House, if they will be smart, then they will just copy exactly what we are doing in California, because we are doing the right thing. And when it relates to this movie, Why I got so passionate about getting involved in this film is because when I was governor, we did the first ocean action protection plan. So we passed laws to protect certain parts of our ocean and of our coastline. And we were very adamant about that. And then we formed partnerships with Oregon and with Washington State and with Vancouver and British Columbia and so on, and the whole coast up to the north. And uh, we were very successful in doing that. And all of those states are now protecting the ocean there. And so we want to be a model for the rest of the United States. We want to be a model for the rest of the world. And this movie has shown really of how beautiful our ocean is and how beautiful the waters are underneath. And what is going on underneath? It's just a life that no one would even know unless you go in there and do what some of our people do, what Jean Cous Michel Cousteau, for instance, and his family has done forever, you know, to film and to show to the world how beautiful the oceans are and how we need to protect of what we have. And this is what I'm all about, and this is what I think we all are all about, is we want to make sure that the air is clean, 
the soil is clean, the ocean is clean, and that we have a future, that we have, uh, we protect the world for future generations. All right? Jill. Uh, buenos días. Eh, Conchita Casanovas de Radio Nacional de España. Quería preguntar al señor Schwarzenegger si uh, siempre ha sido ecologista o, o le pasó como a San Pablo, que vio la luz y dijo vamos a aprovechar un poco la fama para una buena causa. Because that was a very, very good question. Yeah, a, a very good question. And uh, the answer is um, I've always been conscious of the environment and I think it has to do with that I grew up in Austria. And Austria is one of those countries that protects its environment, its lakes, its rivers, um, the forests, uh, the air. So they, they always have done a great job. And everyone always, when I grew up, talked about the importance of a clean environment. But when I became governor of the state of California, and I started learning more about the dangers if we don't protect the environment, the dangers of staying on fossil fuels, I became kind of much more passionate about the subject. And I started getting into it, and I started realizing that I am in a position where I can make major changes and really help people and save lives. Because a lot of people talk about climate change, but I'm talking more about that pollution kills 7 million people a year. So that's now. Today, 19,000 people more will die because of pollution. So when we talk about global warming, that's something that will happen in the future and it's a very, very interesting, very serious problem. And I'm very much into that too. But there's still people that debate that, is the global warming, is it human cost, and blah, 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 and all this stuff. But what we have to do is we have to get off fossil fuels now, because they kill 7 million people a year. And this is much more than people die from wars, much more than people die from traffic accidents, from homicide, from suicide, from all of those things. All this together does not even come close to 7 million people. So this is why we have to do something about it. And I think that a movie like The Wonders of the Sea is a wonderful way without preaching to people and telling them that they're doing the wrong thing and all this, but it's just a beautiful, a visual feast where people can watch, fall in love with it. And as Jean-Michel has said many times, that you protect what you love. So when you fall in love with the ocean and what you see on a screen, then you will much more be inclined to protect it, wanting to protect it for the future. All right? Yes, sir. Um, hello? Um, you may use the headphones okay. for the, the simulation. But that, I thought that you would do the translation for me. <laughs> Come on now. We always said always beautiful women translating. Up there would do it much better. Uh, hello? I, hello? Vamos a la siguiente pregunta. So is it, is it turned on? No, you don't have to. The volume. No, you don't have to turn it on. Maybe the volume is down. Yeah, that's what is working. That's what is working. Actually, for this one, you won't need the translation. It will be in English. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you uh, for this lovely documentary, uh, which um, I really loved it. Uh, I have a question with two parts. The one has to do with the ending of the film. Uh, when it's repeated that the nature forgives, should I ask why people, for people it's not very easy to forgive and forget? That's my first part, the first part of the question. And because who we are is always portrayed in what we do. And yesterday we had the elections in Germany and you can see that the 12% of the population voted for the Nazis. I would like also a comment in that if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, you really want me to answer that? Yes. 
I mean, uh, we really want to hear from you now. <laughs> well, there's only one ocean. There's 7.5 billion people on the planet, and we all depend on that ocean for the quality of our lives. Whether you ski, you're skiing on the ocean, or you drink a glass of water, you're drinking the ocean. We have to understand that forgetting about politics, forgetting about economy or businesses, we are all connected one way or the other to the ocean, and we depend upon it. Every other breath of air you take is coming from the ocean, whether you live near the ocean or far away. So our objective is very simple, is to sit down with decision makers, industries or governments, and not point fingers. Remember, if you point a finger, there's three fingers pointing at you. Try to reach the heart. Everybody has one. Those people have families. They have children. They care about them. But their obligations are very short-sighted. And making money this year or you lose your job or not being re-elected next year or two years from now. Well, let's help them make the bridge with the future. And I've had the pleasure of doing this with different presidents in different parts of the world, in Mexico, in the United States, in France. And uh, most of the time they listen and they take actions. President W. Bush is in the oil business. That's it. And <clears throat> I went and did a show on the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands, which is what my father wanted to do. And he could never do it. I decided to do it. And I was amazed to see the consequences where, and I don't have time, but I counted 52 different countries of trash on the islands in the middle of the Pacific, including France, 52 different countries. And I filmed all of that. We did bring it back. Thanks to our connections, we went all the way to the White House and the president decided to show the film at the White House before it went on television. And as a result of that, he invited me to dinner and he decided to make the Northwestern Hawaiian Island 2,000 uh, kilometers, 1,200 miles long, the largest protected piece of ocean ever in the US. Last year in September, there was a big conference in Hawaii. I was there. President Obama came, and he decided to take an airplane and fly all the way up to the 1,200 miles to see what President Bush had done. And he came back, and he multiplied what President Bush had done by four times bigger, the biggest protected piece of ocean today. And <coughs> very interesting. Democrat Republicans agreed to protect our life support system. That's what we need to do. We need to sit down with people, whoever they are, whoever they've been elected. They have a heart and we can make a difference. And for me, being able to communicate with those people, whoever they are, ultimately it's to be able to have a dialogue with them, and most of the time, they want to help. Yeah, I would just like to add a little thing is when we speak in the movie about forgiveness of the ocean, is because every time on the planet where we protect an area, which could be totally even destroyed, then we found out that the life is coming back very fast in the ocean. So when we protect places, life is coming back. So we don't have to be pessimist. We all have to be optimist for the future. If we protect, then life will go on. Don't forget that the 20th century was a disaster for the environment. 
we have done a huge mess with the 20th century. The 21st century will have to be the environment century, otherwise we may not see the 22nd century. So we are facing something which is full, for me I'm very optimistic that the human beings are not suicide people. We all know that there is a huge problem on the environment and the 21st century will solve our problems. I'd like to add to this that in 1971, my father spoke to the government of the United States and said, if you haven't done what needs to be done for the environment in the next 30, 40, 50 years, it will be too late. We are a few years away of being too late. But we now know, and thanks to the communication revolution, the 7.5 billion people are connected to each other, and the good news is forget about borders, forget about races, forget about religion, forget about all these issues that are still being, some of them, addressed today. There is one human population that can take care of what we depend upon, which is the ocean, and I'm totally convinced that we're heading in that direction today. And we're the only species on the planet that has the privilege to decide not to disappear. Well, that's our choice, and I believe we're heading that way, and that's why we'll never stop. And thanks to the technology that now is available, we are able to show people things that I haven't seen after 73 years of scuba diving with my naked eyes. And we can discover thousands of new species that we all depend upon, which are in the ocean, whether they're plants or animals. So it's a fascinating time. And by being able to communicate that to anyone on the planet, you'll have more and more people like my children and my grandson <laughs> wanting to go and explore what we are connected to, depend upon, and make discoveries which are always fascinating, like you do when you see that film where people now are going to go back home, and particularly young people will educate their parents, their neighbors, their friends, with the knowledge that they have acquired, thanks to Wonders of the Sea. Yeah. Say, say. Sorry, uh, I also had a second, uh, the second part of my question regarding uh, the German elections yesterday, which the 12% of the population voted for the Nazis. I would like a comment, you know, from the ex-governor, Mr. Schwarzenegger. Well, I mean, I don't get involved in different politics of different countries all over the world, um, because no matter what I say, that will be the headline. <laughs> so, yeah. it's important when you are here to display and to promote the wonders of the sea. I want the headline to be tomorrow, the wonders of the sea is a true wonder of visual feast and everyone should see it. You see what I'm saying? Including and that, the 14%. <laughs> everyone should go and see it because the message is so important. And um, the only thing that I want to add to me, because you ask a political question, is don't ever, ever buy into the idea that the environment ought to be a political issue, because it shouldn't be. There is no democratic air or republican air. We all breathe the same air. There's no democratic water or republican water. We all drink the same water. There is no such thing. Political parties make you believe it is a political issue, because that's their business. But the fact of the matter is it's not. 
It's not a political issue. It's a people's issue. It's a simple people's issue. As I said, we are talking here about saving lives and protecting our environment. It doesn't matter what party affiliation you're in. Everyone wants to breathe great air, wants to drink clean water and be protected and hand over this world in better shape to our next generation than we inherited it. That's our responsibility. So that's number one. And number two that I wanted to just say is, there's so many people that talk about the politics of uh, the environment. You know, and the socialists are doing this, and the conservatives are doing this, and the, this party doesn't get along with this party, and government hasn't really done much about this and that. The question you have to ask yourself is, every day, what do you do? What do you do in order to make the world cleaner? Don't ever think that you can wash your hands and hide and say that, well, the government hasn't done enough, or the UN hasn't come to a worldwide agreement yet, or Trump has done that. It's all nonsense dialogue. Because remember, the only partnerships that work and that really deliver is when the public sector and the private sector and the nonprofit sector work together. So you all, each and every one of you, has a very important part to play in this whole mission, or what I call the crusade, because it is an environmental crusade that I'm on to really let the world know that we got to go and come together on this issue and clean our world and create a great future for our children and grandchildren. And so each and every one is responsible for that, okay? Thank you. I, I just would like to add a little thing about our movie has nothing about politics. We are not, in, uh, maybe not all of you have seen the movie, but we are not at all a documentary that is pointing problems and pointing people who made the problems. We are, it, the movie is about love of the ocean. We want to try to touch the heart, the heart of kids, the heart of adults. It's a movie that you can take your grandchild you can take your son, you can take your daughter, you can take all the family can go there. And we hope that a lot of school kids will see the movie because we need them to fall in love in the ocean so they will love to protect it. They are the future generation. And all the movie is about the beauty and the love of the ocean, not about finger pointing problems and, and showing that everything is going into the wall and we are all gonna to die and so on, no. The movie is a love story, a love about the ocean. I, I would just... like to ask you a question. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Can I answer because it? Because you're just uh, so quietly sitting here. Okay. And I'm always concerned when you get to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, yeah, so I have something to add. But do you want to answer my question oh, first? Oh, yes, first, yes. <laughs> Please. When I met all of you, well, I'm, Several I'm, years I'm, ago, I'm afraid not. you were so passionate when you talked to me about this subject. And I just want to know why have you been involved in this project for so many years now? And you are, you are, you are a great visionary in that way. And with great, uh, uh, great passion and enthusiasm, why is that? What made you be so interested in this whole thing? And what's the outcome that you're looking for? I think this, Wasn't that a good question? Yeah, that was Thank a good you. question. You can quote him as a, the question. Um, that's, this is a five years project. So it has been, as a producer, I can tell you it has been very long. Um, but I think that we have been diving less than this man because he's been diving 75, but we have been diving since 35 years. And uh, we had exactly sharing the same views of all these gentlemen, which we want to protect the ocean because we need to protect the ocean. And what a better media to do this than such a movie with such a new technology that you've seen and in 3D, because when you have kids in the theater, in 3D, they will try to grab this and you can say that if this 3D for, for at least the 3D in this film is useful. Sometimes you can question yourself, shall I see this movie in 3D or not? They are just two and a half D. 
Um, so it's so important that we, we, because we did some, produced some other IMAX 3D movies before, and we saw that the impact of these movies is important. So it's the way for us to bring something in the environment, trying to make people aware and want to protect the ocean, and especially with the kids. And I'd like to thank all the, uh, the dream team you have here, from the composer, our director of photography, well, you know this man, he's uh, the one asking the question, <laughs> Jean-Michel and the two directors there. Yeah, we needed two because we, they were tired. Um, and uh, I would like to, uh, if, you, if you like the movie, now I hope you, you're gonna help our, our, uh, our distributor, Spanish distributor, because we're here, because they are, they're gonna launch the movie in, in Spain, which is great, because Spain is a great country for ocean. And uh, uh, I'm gonna say it, uh, the, the name of the distributor is Ac Contre Corriente Films, right? <laughs> I, I, I did it, and I, want, I, I hope we're gonna all support them because it's not just a movie. It's, it's, it's a tool to help save the ocean, and it's a big message. This, as always, uh, uh, Arnold says, a visual feast with an important message. It's not only a film, so we need to support this, uh, the action. So thank you. What about the cameras? What about the music? Yeah, I mean, what happened? <laughs> Why don't you want to talk about that? Patience. Uh, it's very interesting, yeah, uh, because uh, the, 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 we talk about the music, and um, it's very important. If you saw the movie, you can notice that there's a big link between image and music. And maybe Christophe, you want to say a word about this? How we work together on this with uh, with uh, directors? And it's just uh, a ping pong. Yes, ping pong, but. Um, the way was to make something touching people. So I only try to make music that touch people. But it could be different music, but we choose together with uh, Jean Jacques, and we change, and uh, that's all. <laughs> I hope you like. Yeah, I did. And uh, as you, you, your next question, I know it's how difficult is it to film underwater? Yeah, okay, so it is very difficult. So <laughs> Gavin here is a, uh, DP uh, can give a few words about this. As I started to say, the word is patience because um, you don't hand <clears throat> these animals a script. You go down there and you're really shooting from the hip. And um, I think my friends here will admit that <clears throat> many times when they got out of the water because we were all fed up, I would stay there and sometimes great things would happen. So the biggest thing for me is being down there, waiting, waiting, and nine times out of the 10, when you get out of the water, you wonder why you waited. But one time out of 10, you know why you waited. So um, for me, that's the magic of putting the time in and coming up with something that you know is very special and can contribute to the film. Did we answer well your question? Yes, I think that the only thing that you did not do and totally failed to do <laughs> is to compliment the press because this is a press conference and a lot of times people dump on the press. They did a terrible job, they don't communicate well and this and that and all those kind of complaints. But I like to point out the good side of the press because I wouldn't be sitting here if it wouldn't be for the press. I mean, if it was my bodybuilding that we did this huge promotion for decades and the press was very helpful in helping me promote bodybuilding and fitness and health and all of those things. And if it was my film career where the press always was there promoting my movies and writing about my movies, sometimes bad reviews. <laughs> but, but that's okay. That's okay because I agree that not every one of my movie was great. Some of them went right in the toilet, but that's okay. <laughs> that's where they belonged. But uh, so, but I mean, the press was always there writing about it, you know, and I was not always pleased with everything they wrote, but they promoted the stuff. And the same was in the political, my political arena. When I became governor, they helped me a lot to really promote all the different issues including environmental issues. 
And I just want to tell you that when we were at the Cannes Film Festivals with this movie, we had the press participate 100%. We had the best write-ups about this movie from Cannes. As a matter of fact, we stole the show. I mean, there was more great write-ups and more covers and great articles about the wonders of the sea than anything else. So I just want to say thank you to the press for their participation, and I hope that you continue this way promoting this movie because it is, like I said, a very, very important issue. So thank you to the press for all your hard work and all your great work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We have to finish. Bueno, muchísimas gracias a, a todos. Con este agradecimiento tenemos que terminar la rueda de prensa. Gracias.